My talk today is in part my contribution to that party, but my agenda is a little broader than that because while Darwin's work and his voyages are well known, and rightly so, two other men made major contributions to both the birth and early acceptance of the theory of evolution. They were Alfred Wallace and Henry Walter Bates, and these two men undertook voyages even longer in duration and under more difficult circumstances than Darwin. These three men had a lot in common. They were all young Englishmen, and they were all desperate to escape gray, drab, rainy, cold England for the glories of the tropics, or at least the glories that they had read about from some previous travelers. They were also prodigious collectors. Uh, I think they had some form of OCD, sort of obsessive collecting disorder, because for virtually their entire lives, they pickled and pinned and labeled virtually every creature that they came across. They're also young men. Very important to keep in mind that their critical voyages were taken at the age, in Darwin's case, of 22. Bates was 23. Wallace was 25 when he left home. But it was through this prodigious collecting that each individual gathered a great appreciation for the variety that each species exhibited. And from this really hard-earned knowledge, they evolved from mere collectors into scientists who asked not just what creatures existed, but how those creatures came to be. And the pursuit of that question led each man to unique discoveries. So what I want to do in the course of my talk is have us walk in the footsteps of these three pioneers and to understand how the creatures they encountered inspired these ideas. And I think that the voyages and discoveries of these three men, they really constitute a golden age, not just in evolutionary science, but in, certainly in all of biology, if not exploration in general. And in the second part of my talk, I briefly want to explain why I think right now, today, we're in a second golden age of evolutionary science. Now, no one's experiences better fit that description of spirit and deed than Alfred Wallace. So my tales today will begin with Alfred Wallace.